I'm Seisha Soki Luger. I like arts and crafts, and I'm seven. My name is Iokahoku Luger. I am nine, and I like to draw. I am Chinupa Hanska Luger. I am an artist, and I also like arts and crafts. What was the process of making every bead, and like, how long did it take? Well, uh, it took a long time if I were to do this alone. Yeah. But because we, we helped, you did help. Both of you helped, as well as hundreds of other people, yeah. um, and dozens of different organizations, museums, and schools, and people in their kitchens uh, and in their on their dining room tables. Uh, what I did is I created a video on how to make the beads and why we wanted to make the beads. Each bead in this, in, uh, in this piece here, uh, every one, represents uh, a life. It represents somebody from a data set out of Canada around missing and murdered indigenous women. These are all of the data points that represent people found or people missing in relationship to that. Um, and I asked the public to help make that data set uh, by rolling a ball of clay in their hands. And you guys helped on it. It was simple enough that no matter what your age was, you could participate in the piece itself. And there are 64 strands, uh, strings, and then there are 64 beads, so 64 times 64 equals 4,096. That's so many beads. It is. I, what I like about this skull, it's not really a question, it's just what I'm told, telling you something. I really like about this skull all the pluses on it and like all the pluses on all the bones. What did, what's that supposed to be? Yeah, no, great question. Um, the plus, or the cross symbol, in uh, a lot of native cultures, uh, but in ours in particular, is a star. So I, I wanted these buffalo to be emergent from the earth, but I also wanted them to be uh, connected to the entire universe. And so representing the dark piece with the stars um, I thought was uh, a great way to make that kind of like connection of sky and earth. These pieces in particular represent the Buffalo Nation. This piece is called Emergent, um, and I wanted to create the histories of other species on this planet as they've uh, kind of been looked over or forgotten about in American history. There were somewhere between 30 and 60 million buffalo in North America, one of the largest biomasses on the planet. And they were eradicated by human beings, and in particular, the United States uh, had an entire uh, genocidal effort to annihilate the buffalo. And the thing that I, the reason why I'm so interested in representing that is. I am aware that their annihilation was to create a war of attrition against my people, our people, the Mandan, the Hidatsa, the Lakota, the Cheyenne, all of those tribes that were uh, in an interdependent relationship with the Buffalo Nation within like, I would say, 60 years, that 30 million to 60 million buffalo were reduced to 1,500. Uh, that's 1,500. So I want their history to emerge from the floor of our museums or any sort of infrastructure or um, building, urban center, city, to remind people that this is Buffalo Nation country. That's pretty dark. It is, but it's also our honest history in the United States, and I think it's important that we acknowledge that and understand it. What was the 
the inspiration to make this? Uh, the mirrored shield is was built out of desperation, really. Uh, I asked the people uh, using social media as a platform to create something that I designed in the parking lot of a large hardware store that would transform the audience on social media from allies into accomplices. We needed shields on the front lines at the Dakota Access Pipeline uh, engagement with the Ocheti Shikoi. Um, and I asked people to create these and send them to the camps so that it would protect the water protectors who were facing um, some police brutality and, um, and to stand with water and protect water rather than uh, fight for oil. The people of the camps were trying to protect our water, which is everybody's, because water's first lesson is sharing. And it's one of our oldest medicines. And there were folks there uh, standing on the front line to protect the water of the Dakota Access Pipeline, to prevent that pipeline from crossing the water. And so the inspiration came from uh, the mirrored shield has been used throughout history, in lore, and in reality to uh, kind of fight insurmountable enemies. And so it was also used in the Ukraine during their civil unrest. I saw women bringing mirrors to the front line so the police could see themselves. And I thought that would be an important uh, uh, aspect of what was happening at the Dakota Access Pipeline, which allowed the opposition to be reflected off the surface of those who were trying to protect water. Okay, I've had this question for a long time about the snake. Uh-huh. Like, how did you get all the materials to make the snake? Well, uh, it was actually quite easy. Because the snake is made entirely of... Uh, Trash? Detritus from the hydrocarbon industry. Yeah, it's pretty much trash. It's old tires, it's old oil drums, uh, it's plastic and it's rubber. Uh, it's a variety of military uh, parts and pieces. It was actually surprisingly easy to get this material because so much of this material exists in our world. A lot of the tires were found just on the side of our, of our interstates um, and uh, donations from folks who were getting rid of old tires as well as our old tires from our family's vehicles. I've had this question for a long time. How did you get like these tires together and like, put them all together to make the snake? Well, that was done with uh, patience and practice. I had to cut the tires and stitch them together and wrap them around a steel frame to create that kind of ring of tired surface. What took the longest time to make? Um, I believe that all of my work has taken my entire life to create. There are little tiny steps along the way that um, you learn how to do new skill sets. So this regalia, for instance, came about by interacting with a variety of materials and then also my mother, your grandma. She did all of the beadwork on the face plates of the regalia, and I was working with um, used sporting equipment and riot gear, police, uh, police riot gear, to create the regalia for these two figures, the one who checks and the one who balances. These are based on our Monster Slayer stories, and these two characters are stopping and preventing the... Uh, it's not a snake, it is a serpent built out of uh, the hydrocarbon industry. It's a monster we have fed, and they're the ones holding it back from attacking nature. My question is, did you intend to make nature like a buffalo, bear claws, 
Yes, I did. I thought nature should represent all of the things in life. And so, not only does it represent several animals and humanoid forms, it also blurs uh, uh, gender perspectives as well as uh, materiality. So, it is made of ceramic and plant textiles and steel and wood and uh, wool from animal textiles. It plays with this whole narrative around all of these components of human civilization, but also all of the minerals and elements of nature itself. And so I thought nature should be represented as uh, kind of broad of a perspective as possible, and also towering above anybody else who will enter into the space. Um, it doesn't feel uh, uh, necessarily androgynous, but it represents kind of like a blurred perspective of nature and all of its complexity. So it's basically like every single planet Earth moves the door. Absolutely. That is nature. Papa, how did it take, like, how did you put all the, um, Bandanas on, uh, like, since it's a metal structure, how did you, did you glue all the bandanas on, or did, or did they just lay there? Well, there's a couple of different ways that the bandanas were applied. You know that the bandanas were created by a community during a uh, social distancing required pandemic response. So I do a lot of socially engaged projects, and this one we had to do when people could not engage together. So we asked folks to embroider how they're feeling or how they're doing or what they want to um, they can represent some sort of feeling that they're having onto a bandana and embroider that into it and send it to us. And we received over 800 bandanas by doing this sort of call. And the bandanas were applied to the overall surface in a few ways. One, they were sewn directly onto the steel frame on the head of the, of the uh, wolf companion species. And the rest of the bandanas are sewn onto Velcro pieces, which then are laid onto the overall structure of the of the of the she wolf, so that it creates a kind of pelt for her. And our idea around that was we were thinking about shelter and what it means to be sheltered, uh, and maybe our first experience with a sense of comfort and security based on shelter is at, in your mother's arms. And we asked the population to create her shelter. So as the audience enters and is allowed to be sheltered by the wolf, it, everybody knows that her shelter, her pelt, her fur that covers her body was made by us. It was made by a huge population of people from across the globe sending in individual bandanas and we place them on the surface of the wolf. This project allowed them to create a participatory uh, uh, effort where we could all work together to make something in the comfort of their own homes. And that kind of points towards like how the bandanas and how like, a type of mask is a bandana. Absolutely, Eo. That's why we decided to use bandanas is because it was a type of mask that had been used not only to protect people in the case of uh, coronavirus, but also to protect people against other uh, uh, different different other contaminants. So the bandana is often used during civil unrest, and we experienced that during the pandemic as well, uh, with huge movements around Black Lives Matter and uh, also uh, things happening in you know kind of across the globe. The mask has been used over and over as a way to protect your identity as well as uh, shelter your, your, and protect yourself. And so we thought, this is an object that can be found in anybody's home at this time. And so they wouldn't have to go outside of their home to, to find it. <laughs>